Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. Today I'd like to talk about uh, how we scale Prometheus using Cortex, a CNCF project um, designed around really building kind of a clustered version of Prometheus. Hopefully going to take about 20 minutes of your time, at least lots of time at the end for Q&A. I'm joined today by, uh, by Ken. Ken was one of the first people, I guess, other than myself, to, uh, to start running Cortex over at EA uh, three years ago. Ken's now at Microsoft, uh, where he's a principal software engineer, and he's also, uh, he was one of the first uh, Cortex maintainers as well. Uh, myself, I'm the VP product at Grafana Labs. I'm a Prometheus maintainer, one of the original authors of Cortex. I also started a project uh, called Loki, which is our horizontally scalable uh, kind of Prometheus-inspired log aggregation system. So today we're really we're really gonna treat this super super simple. Um, why Cortex? Why should you care? What does it do? How does it help you? When is it appropriate? Um, we're gonna have a bit of a demo, um, and then leave plenty of time for a Q and A. So this is this is my mental model for for how people get started with Prometheus. This is how I got started with Prometheus. Um, I really love the Prometheus system, and, and this talk is not going to be about bashing Prometheus. Um, the things I love about Prometheus are that this pool-based monitoring system that uses kind of dynamic service discovery to, to find your jobs. I really love this because it just kind of works for me, you know, especially if you're running your jobs in a Kubernetes cluster. It just finds them, it scrapes them, it gives you that kind of monitoring experience you really, you really want. It's got this incredibly powerful query language and multi-dimensional data model, which makes it so easy to do kind of ad hoc analysis and, and compare application level metrics and, and system level metrics together in one query. It also allows you to do some kind of really powerful stuff in alerting, like uh, error budget and SLO style alerting. And finally, it's open source. It's incredibly resource efficient and it's really easy to operate. So in general, Prometheus is more than enough for most people. Um, in this kind of model, you know, if I'm running every, all my jobs in a single cluster, I can I can deploy a Prometheus and a Grafana and and really start collecting metrics and building dashboards in 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 you know within the hour, um, and this works really really well. You know, talking about dashboards, um, you know, Grafana another great open source piece of software. Um, you know, really easy to, draw, to to build dashboards using Prometheus, and this is one of the uh, one of the dashboards we have internally for one of our, our demos. The challenges with Prometheus and, and this model really come when you start deploying your software in multiple disparate clusters. Um, you, you know, especially if these clusters are disconnected. This pool-based model that Prometheus has really encourages you to deploy the Prometheus server co-located with your jobs, like next to your jobs in the same cluster. And so what we typically see is when people start to service customers in Europe and, and, and in Asia, they'll deploy their application in a, in a region there and, and deploy some Prometheus with it. And at this point, right, you've got your Grafana pointing at one of them. How do I start, you know, how do I start monitoring my other, my other regions? A lot of people will just deploy multiple Grafanas. One of the things you can do um, I'm sure most people are familiar. You can actually use Grafana with multiple data sources. And what's even cooler is you can sub out um, the data source. You can template out the data source in your dashboard to allow you to switch between different regions. So this is this is kind of, you know, pretty mature already uh, and pretty usable. Um, you can easily drill down into metrics in a single region. You can you can figure out what's going on. And in a recent Grafana release, you can even start combining metrics from multiple regions. The challenge here comes when I want to look at my global metrics in a single query. Let's say I want to look at um, my global CPU usage. You know, maybe I'm doing some capacity planning and I'm deciding where I should deploy more, more resources. It's hard to do if I have to connect to three different Prometheus servers to, to do that. But all is not lost, and this can actually be achieved. You can actually achieve a solution to this without Cortex. And so I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Federation. Federation is Prometheus's answer to how to build kind of global observability. You deploy effectively another Prometheus server on top of your existing ones. That Prometheus server goes out and scrapes the, the edge Prometheus servers and you know gives you that central place with all that data. 
there's a few challenges here, and this is really where we set out to kind of uh, help with Cortex. The challenge here, for one, is your, your global Prometheus server has to be able to connect to and scrape metrics from your edge Prometheus servers. And this means if you don't have like a fully connected kind of set of VPN tunnels, you probably need some way of exposing these Prometheus servers to the internet. You probably need some way of securing them and controlling who can access them, um, opening up firewall ports, things like that. The other challenge here is you can very quickly overwhelm that single global Prometheus server as you start to scale up the number of metrics in it. Um, Prometheus is a very vertically scalable piece of software and you can just take a bigger box and, and, and run it on, on machines and recently we saw someone running Prometheus with like a terabyte of RAM which, uh, which was pretty impressive. Um, but that's not the kind of model we're used to in, in the cloud native world and I'm, we're really looking for something that's more horizontally scalable there. So the solution we recommend in the Prometheus space is that actually you don't propagate the raw samples to the central global federation server, but you only propagate pre-aggregated data. So you can imagine, you know, at each um, at each edge node, you might have metrics per pod, but then you might only propagate metrics per service, you know, for per deployment, per stateful set to the federated server. And this is one way of kind of controlling the cardinality in that in that federated server. This works really well, and there's a lot of kind of best practices around how to manage the recording rules you need, how to make sure that only the right metrics get propagated. But at the end of the day, it's overhead that you need to manage. You'll also find not having the raw data available in a central location means you have to be careful about how you construct your queries. And it's not necessarily the case that the same query will work locally in an edge as it would work globally in the central federation server. All in. This is quite a powerful technique, and it's very simple and reliable, but it can be uh, it can be quite tricky to master. So this is really where Cortex comes in. You can deploy, instead of a, a global federation server, you can deploy a central Cortex cluster. And as Cortex is horizontally scalable, you can scale that cluster up to take all your raw metrics, having basically the union of all the metrics in all the edge Prometheuses all in a single place. Cortex itself is also highly available through replication. And we've basically gone to a lot of effort to accelerate queries and to, to make this system functional for this use case. The, the, the horizontal scalability in the Cortex cluster also allows you to grow and shrink the cluster as you add or remove edge locations. And generally, it's, it's really designed for that kind of global visibility into your metrics. So once you've got something like this, in Grafana, you can start doing queries like sum by cluster and see which cluster is using the most CPU. This is actually a, a query of uh, the 15 or so clusters we've got at Grafana Labs. So a bit more about Cortex, the horizontally scalable Prometheus implementation. Cortex is a time series database like Prometheus. It actually uses the same time series database as Prometheus. Um, we add a lot of distributed systems glue to make that database horizontally scalable. The other big difference with Cortex is it's push-based. So you don't have to open up firewall ports and worry about securing every single one of your edge locations. You just have to worry about securing the Cortex cluster. And you can have Prometheus natively push its metrics using its remote write system directly to Cortex. Alongside the, the glue we've put in for horizontal scalability, we use something called a distributed hash table. Um, we've also added replication. Um, this allows Cortex to tolerate failures in the nodes without ending up in gaps in your graphs. This also means it's super easy to kind of do a rolling upgrade with zero downtime in a Cortex cluster. And then once you've got all your data in one location, it, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty obvious you're going to want to store it and you're going to want to store it for a long time. Cortex is, uh, offloads a lot of the long-term storage aspects to object stores. And so really you connect it to an S3 bucket and it will go and put the blocks of data in there for long-term storage. Prometheus itself is totally, totally useful for long-term storage. And, and, you know, as long as you've got a big enough disk and you take regular backups, you can store data for years in, in Prometheus. But in Cortex, we care about a lot about durability. We care a lot about replication. We care a lot about making sure that if a machine fails, there's backups and replica of that data for you. And the final thing that really sets Cortex apart is its support for multi-tenancy. 
inside a single cortex cluster, multiple different users can be isolated from each other with their own data sets that only they have access to. And we go to a lot of lengths to make sure that not only is the data isolated, but also from a performance perspective, one user can't run big queries and can't, can't kind of start sucking up all the resources of a single cluster. There's a lot of kind of sophisticated quality. Sorry about that. There's a lot of sophisticated quality of service, a lot of sophisticated kind of limit and quota management all baked into Cortex so that if you're a, a central observability team within a large organization, you can have different teams within your company share the same Cortex cluster. And as we said, this is no longer a sandbox project. Instead, in, in fact, I have to update the slide. Cortex is now a CNCF incubation project. It's Apache licensed, it's open source. It's got a vibrant maintainer community. And really, I would encourage you at this stage to, to go and get involved and try it out. A bit of history. Um, I started uh, the Cortex project with a chap called Julius who, who started the Prometheus project. Uh, we started it almost four years ago. No, over four years ago now, wow. Um, we initially used DynamoDB for a lot of the storage requirements. Um, after that, I added support for Google Bigtable. Um, and that was about when Ken started using Cortex at EA. I understand though, still on DynamoDB. Shortly after that, we added support for Cassandra and, and really had the ability now to start running Cortex on-premise and out of the clouds. Um, and really, one of the things I'm very proud of with Cortex is I, I feel like we got the right path, the, the, the scalability of the right path in Cortex. We got, it, we got it pretty good pretty quickly. And this allowed us to move on and start focusing on query performance. So we put a lot of time and effort into parallelizing, sharding, and and generally finding ways to horizontally scale queries. And I, th I feel like we, I've given talks at KubeCon before about the techniques we've used. I'd, I'd really encourage you to go and look at those. And I feel like one of the things that really sets Cortex apart is the focus for the past two or three years we've had on query performance and on caching and on parallelization and on sharding. We joined the CNCF Sandbox in uh, 2018 um, we got more maintainers now, uh, a lot of maintainers at Grafana Labs, Gotham, uh, Marco, Peter, Jacob, but also um, Ken at Microsoft, Chris at Splunk, Brian at Weaveworks. Since uh, for about a year or so, we've been focused on ease of use and on community. We've put a lot of effort into making it easy for people to get started with Cortex, putting a lot of effort into a website, into um, getting started documentation, documenting our configuration file, this kind of thing. And, and hopefully now, you'll, if you follow our instructions on the website, you'll be able to use Cortex you know, in half an hour. We did our first 1.0 release, well, our only hopefully 1.0 release, uh, earlier this year. And that really, for me, marks the start of when I think non-maintainers of Cortex can really start to lean on Cortex in anger. We've been seeing a lot of adoption of Cortex over the past year uh, in, in some quite large companies. Um, and very recently, a month ago, we launched what's called the Blocks-based storage engine in Cortex. So this is the same storage engine that Thanos uses. Uh, it's the same code. Um, Marco, who did this in Cortex, is also a Thanos maintainer. And, and really marks a lot of collaboration between the Cortex and Thanos projects. They work, we work together on accelerating the performance of this storage engine, on things like caching and scalability of the query path for this storage engine. And this really also really helps Cortex because it reduces the number of dependencies down to just an object store. Um, this makes it much easier to get started with Cortex and also makes it significantly more cost effective to run a very large Cortex cluster. The, uh, the design doc on the right is the Project Frankenstein design doc that Julius and I wrote um, a long time ago now, four years ago, wow. Uh, and yeah, originally Cortex was called Project Frankenstein, um, but we've renamed it since then. So thank you for uh, thank you for listening to me. At this point, I'm going to hand over to Ken. He's going to show you how uh, how easy it is to uh, to use Cortex and and how it can scale over multiple clusters. Over to you, Ken. All right, let's jump into a demo. What we're going to show here over the next few minutes is collecting metrics from uh, various Prometheus instances and sending them to a central Cortex installation, which we in, then we can do global aggregates and reports uh, with via Grafana. All right. So what we've uh, what I've set up on my uh, local Docker is I have a three node Cortex installation. 
and an instance of Grafana running on a uh, Docker network um, that's separate from this Prometheus and Node Exporter instance. They're running on their own to simulate they're running in a particular region while your Cortex uh, installation is centrally located somewhere else. Uh, not really particular where, just that the Prometheus can send data up to it. So our Cortex uh, ring is fully up and running. Let's just uh, double check, uh, hit refresh a couple times there. So we get recent data. So we've got three nodes in the, in the member list ring and they are all active and have their tokens registered. So this is also fully redundant uh, for fault tolerance. Uh, so any one of these notes can go down and we can keep uh, uh, processing data and querying data. So back to console. Um, so Prometheus is sending data and we're going to add uh, two more regions here uh, to the mix. So we're going to create uh, region two and add its Prometheus and node exporter. So there's number two. We go in here as well. All right. So while those are set up, these uh, Prometheus configurations are not uh, complex in any means. Uh, this is pretty much the basic uh, sample uh, Prometheus configuration has been updated to create from the node exporter uh, source as well. The main uh, pieces here that are important for the demo is they're all pointing to uh, this URL to uh, remote write uh, data to. So everything they collect, they'll push up to that URL, which is where uh, Cortex is listing, to write the data into its storage. Uh, to differentiate each region, uh, we're adding a region tag uh, to each one. So this one's from region one, there's one that says region two, three, and we'll see that on the Grafana dashboard here momentarily. So if we go back to our, or we flip over to Grafana here to global overview, I created this, this demo board uh, to just showcase just some, some sample metrics that were coming in from the node exporters. So uh, I've been collecting region one for quite a while and we just extended out to two and three. So those lines are just starting to show up now. Uh, so these, these uh, this is one, one query on one data source uh, that's just highlighting that you can now see that there are multiple time series coming in from the different regions. You can see all that in one view and in one query. So this also means you can do aggregates on this data as well, uh, which is what the, the total is, uh, the total graph shows as well. So if we zoom in on that, I mean, it's just summing all that data together and it also, because uh, everything is also being brought in from all, all the nodes now as well, beyond just this global aggregate, we can now take something like the, the node exporter and we see all the nodes here uh, with data. So if we click each one of these, you'll see node one had a lot of data because it's been recording before I started the demo, but node two and three are just being added now. So they're just starting to send in data. So uh, while this was all on my machine uh, deployed locally uh, using Docker networks to simulate it, uh, it should it should have uh, been a good inspiration of how straightforward it is to take any one of your Prometheus installations uh, from any of your environments and now point it to a central Cortex installation for you to uh, store the data, query the data, and aggregate it with other installations from a single dashboard. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. That was great. Now we're gonna we're gonna try and take some Q and A. Um, do bear with us, um, but but hang around and uh, ask any questions. Thank you so much for listening. Bye. <laughs>